Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a stack of birthday cards that I made using some of the just released products with Ralph Tyndall Designs and Hero Arts. Ralph reached out to me and asked if I would like to receive the, the new products. And I said yes. I was very much looking forward to seeing his his take on things. And yeah, I made these cards. I used rub-ons, which I'm not even sure. I may have used rub-ons many, many, like 15 plus years ago. I don't even know. It's been a long time. Uh, I haven't used them in a really long time. And these are just, they're just fun. They're just fun. So I used a ton of them. I, I had a blast making these. So yeah, I will have a link to all the new products in the description box below the video. And then as always, I will list and link all the supplies I specifically use to make these cards. So you can check that out below and then yeah, keep watching and I will show you guys how I made these. So first off, here is a look at the new products that Ralph has released in this first bundle, basically. Everything's available individually. Um, this is the center stage stamp set and you can get it as the stamp and die set as I showed, or you can get just the stamp set and without the coordinating wafer dies. And then there's the center stage crowd um, fancy wafer die. And then the sta uh, stage curtain wafer die which coordinates with the color layering stage curtain stencils and all of this you can kind of use like together as it's coordinate or you know individually and then there is the um, Stampin Cuts XL and these are the essential messages and then these other like final two we have the composition notebook background the uh, composition notebook XL stamp and cuts which are the sentiments and then the rub-ons and I for my cards that's what I focus on as those last products so I started with the composition notebook notebook pattern background and I put it face up on my desk it's red rubber with cling foam so I just peeled off the backing and stuck it right to my desk and I had to do just black ink first on like white cardstock, you know, that that classic like composition notebook look because this stamp, especially when I first like opened the package, I was like, I don't I was like, is this um, like camo? And then, you know, seeing all the products, I was like, oh, oh, it's a notebook cover. Love it. Love it. So there we go. So I used Versafine Claire Nocturne ink and inked up the stamp. And then I'm pressing um, smooth white cardstock into it. And because I've got all the things out, uh, I, was, I made two. Two of each because originally it was going to be two cards. And then I just I was like, well, what would this look like in other colors? <laughs> uh, so I'm just using some scrap paper to prevent the Nocturne ink. I don't mind getting ink on my hands, but Nocturne ink specifically is because it's an oil-based ink. And it gets everywhere if you're not careful, you know. So I stamped those two backgrounds. And then I have also panels of just thinner white cardstock because that's going to go on the insides of my cards. So for the first, the cards with the black background, I'm using Simon's Flannel Positively Saturated Ink and stamping it on the thinner cardstock because that's going to go on the insides of the cards. So same thing, inked up the stamp, press the cardstock into it with the lighter ink. And then I started like, hmm other colors what 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 other colors do I want to use so I pulled out this one is Simon's raindrop ink and stamped that onto the smooth white cardstock and uh, perfection and then I used dew ink for what will be the insides so same thing just cleaning in between the different colors and then stamping all these panels of cardstock and then my final combo was uh, bubble gum which is the lighter ink I use that for what will be the inside of the cards and then sweets ink which is just a deeper pink and that first attempt with the bubblegum ink I didn't fully cover like press down the cardstock but cardstock's got two sides so I flipped it over inked up the stamp stamped again we're good to go because no one's going to see it because that's going to get glued to the inside of the card so my final card fronts were the sweets ink color so got that stamped 
And then um, once I'm done my stamping, I clean off my stamp, put it back on the, the backing panel. And we're good to go to move on to the next the next step to making all these cards. So I trimmed down a bunch of scraps of the same smooth white cardstock and I'm using the um, XL composition notebook sentiments set. There's the the stamps with like just a variety of sentiments for all sorts of occasions. And then there's coordinating little wafer dies that are basically kind of shaped like the the labels for the notebooks. And so I made sure to cut my cardstock big enough to be able to die cut it because there's like two sort of smaller label labels and then there's two larger labels so you can like frame them so that's what I was going for so I decided to make all of these birthday cards I've been kind of talking about this I'm like determined to have a good stash of birthday cards because this is something I've oh, in the past I just didn't make very often I don't know why it's weird anyway making a bunch these especially so good for teenagers teachers anyone really I just I was like who doesn't love like a notebook who doesn't love like shopping for school supplies or the stationery aisle in the store <laughs> love it love it like all of it anyway I have so many random notebooks I just I love notebooks anyway <laughs> I stamped the happy birthday sentiment with that nocturne ink and then the wishing you a that sentiment and they all look sort of handwritten which I really love too uh, I stamped in the same shades of ink that I stamped the the notebook cover on so I did the like the sweet ink the raindrop ink and then for the ones for the black cards I used that just the flannel ink so after those were stamped I took the inside pieces that's what's gonna go on the inside of the card and I used um, the sentiments that says uh, this card belongs to and then the lines because I was like oh that's kind of cute I'll stick that on the inside because then when you fill it out to the birthday recipient you can put their name you know right below like on the line and I just thought that was just a cute little extra touch so stamp that onto the all of these panels with that Versafine Claire Nocturne ink and for all of this I'm using my, my Misty so went through and stamped so I do just like I do with everything you know I stamped all the backgrounds just back to back to back did that all in one step and then stamped all the, the main sentiments and then stamped all the inside panels then I die cut all those pieces of cardstock and I also die cut um, lighter shades of cardstock just grab different ones from my stash that were just a lighter shade than the the card fronts so I die cut those with the larger labels so those are gonna frame the smaller ones and then I put Simon's Big Mama foam tape on the back of the sentiment labels and then adhered them to the larger ones. They're nice and framed and it gives them a bit of lift, gives it a little bit of dimension and then rub-ons. So like I said in the intro, I have, I can, I'm not even sure if I've actually used rub-ons, but if I have, it's been so long I don't remember. <laughs> so it's been many, many, many years and I wasn't sure this was my literal first attempt, but before I stuck it on there, I was like, ooh, want to trim these down because these panels are right now uh, a two size. So four and a quarter by five and a half. So I trimmed all of them down till they were four, four by five and a quarter. And yeah, the, the pack of rub-ons comes with the little popsicle stick. I was like, oh, I might need to use my bone folder. I remember rub-ons being a lot more difficult back in the day. Maybe I'm just, again, just like fever dream or something. I just, I seem to recall it was a lot more. And that's why, another reason why I never liked them. Because I just remember you had to be re, like you had to apply so much pressure. You had to be like exact. Get at least the ones I ever worked with. And I wasn't sure at first. So I was like, I applied quite a bit of pressure. Made sure I completely covered it. Once I kind of got the hang of it, these, these went on really easily. Like, I, you know, I started, I was only going to add one or two and then I just went to town. I had so much fun. Uh, the Oh Snap one that I'm, uh, that I'm going to apply right now, that one just got me. That, that S, I think a lot of you hopefully might remember doodling that. Like, we were all just born with that innate ability to draw that S. You like doodle it on the insides of all the notebooks. I don't know. I remember all the time. We thought we were so cool. Anyway, <laughs> lava, and lava lamps. All of this, I was just like, oh man cassette tapes and just all of it all these graphics I was like this this is like me in the 90s man like love it love it so 
I just, like I said, I went to town and just started sticking them all over these backgrounds. On darker backgrounds, you can see the, the rub-ons are, especially on camera, they're not as obvious in a sense. Like they're, they're se semi, I would say semi-transparent. I kind of liked that. I, I just, I liked it. I, I, I can't, I don't know. I don't know. The, the matte finish of them, they went on great. And just the way these ended up looking like, you know, little notebook covers. And then I was just, I was getting ideas. Again, you guys, I say this all the time, but it's true. I wish I had more hours in the day. But I was getting ideas. Especially like that background stamp. I was like, ooh, if I ink that up in rainbow colors. Oh. Did some like watery techniques. Like inked it up with water reactive inks. And then spray it with water. And then stamp it onto like watercolor paper. That would create some really fun backgrounds so many things anyway i just had a fun little time picking out all all sorts of those rub-ons covered all these backgrounds and then yeah i added splatter personally i think the splatter really made these <laughs> even though i kept it somewhat subtle like it's not crazy amounts of splatter but i used black soot distress paint and my fan brush and my splat box and i splattered all these backgrounds and i think it was just perfect i just it was fun so I splattered them and then I just set them aside to dry. It's also why I kept it to six. I don't often make, you know, a whole bunch of cards at once. But the big thing too is stuff like this. It's like, where, where do I put them to dry? I have, n I'm not even kidding you guys. I have no surfaces. Like my little square foot of, you know, working space to film. That's about it. <laughs> Everything's piled up on top of everything else. It's a mess. Anyway, I'm such a professional. So I splattered all the backgrounds. And then let them dry. And then once I had all of the let the paint dry, which didn't take um, didn't take very long. And then immediately washed my brush, wiped off my palette because distressed paint dries permanently. So you want to clean off your brush. Do not let it sit with that paint. So once the paint was dry, I adhered the um, sentiment labels to the fronts of each of these panels. And I just used my craft tacky glue to adhere those into place. So same thing, you know, just like everything else, I did everything in, um, in order. So I did all the splattering at once and then I adhered all the sentiments at once and let that dry. And then once I have all of the sentiments adhered to these backgrounds, I also had a baker's twine, which if you've been watching my recent videos, I have been very much on a baker's twine kick again. And I love it. I love it. I thought it was just a cute addition to these cards too. It just gives it that little extra something. So I pulled out um, some different twines from my stash and wrapped them around each of the card fronts a couple times. Once I was, you know, got my placement, got um, enough of the twine that I wanted. Reverse tweezers, as always, must have. Even if you're not into like using, you know, twine or ribbon or anything of that, reverse tweezers are just a must have in card making. Like I've shown in other videos using them to hold things in place <clears throat> while the glue dries, all that kind of stuff. Like, yes. Anyway, use it to hold the knot, fiddled with the bow, got it the way I wanted it, remove the reverse tweezers, tighten the bow, and then trim off um, the excess of the tails and then just repeated that process over and over again on all the cards. So once I had all of the um, baker's twine tied onto all of these card fronts, I then made all my card bases, which I used, um, this one is Concord Ninth Peacock cardstock. I'm pretty positive. So I just cut each of the sheets in half and then I'm scoring these at four and a quarter. I did side fold cards. Not also not something I do very often. <laughs> but for these cards specifically, I was like, they need to be side fold because you know, like a notebook. Like they need to open like a notebook. That's just what has to it just has to be. So I scored all these at four and a quarter. So these are all gonna be side fold A2 size cards. So four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And yeah, the first one I think was Peacock. Then I used uh, Simon's Stamps Doll Pink cardstock and then Simon's Black cardstock for all of my card bases. And then I'm going to adhere all of the card fronts to the card bases. Again, just using some craft tacky glue. Thought about popping these up with foam tape. That would look really cute too, but decided to just adhere them flat to the card. And then once I got the card fronts adhered, adhered the, the coordinating insides to the insides of the cards and 
yeah, the insides I'd already trimmed down as well. Same thing. I trimmed those down to four inches by five and a quarter as well. So that just slightly smaller so that the card base gives it a nice little like mat. So got those adhered, did that with all of them. And that finished off all of these cards. So yeah, like I keep saying, I just, I had fun. The robots were really fun. I, I didn't think I would enjoy them. Like I was like, I just, I don't know, really? Hmm. And then I started applying them and I was like, okay, this is really fun. I really like this. I just, I loved how they looked. It was, it was fun. So like I mentioned in the intro, I will have uh, a supply list and all the things listed and linked in the description box below the video. So you can just expand that and the links will be there. I'll have a link to my blog post in the blog post. It's all, you know, visual supply list, all the photos, etc. So all that's there to make it a little easier to navigate. I'll have links to my social medias, all that stuff. So you can check that out below if you are interested. And as always, thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos and thumbs upping and commenting. It legit helps. It just tells those robot overlords you guys enjoy what you're seeing. Because yeah, my whole life's at the mercy of the, the algorithms, aka the robot overlords. And yeah, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.